To Walk or Stay, subtitled Trusting God Through Shattered Hopes and Suffocating Fears. Laura, welcome to today's issues. Hi, Ray. Thank you so much. We're glad to have you with us today. Um, you know, I didn't say anything at all about your book mm-hmm. because I want because really the book is the story of of the shattering of your marriage and how God put it back together again. And um, really, I, I think it's one of the most courageous books I've ever seen. Tell us, tell us a little bit about your story and why you decided. I mean, there's the story, and then there's the book. Tell us about your story and why you decided to write the book. Well, thank you so much again for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, you know, the book, the backdrop of the book is my husband Adam and I's marriage story. Um, but really, ultimately, the book is a testimony to how faithful God was, not only to restore our home, which he has and, and continues to do, but even more than that, beyond that, the greater victory, which was him meeting me um, in the darkest of pits, in the deepest of valleys, and just proving how he is a sufficient God, and that when we seek after him, he faithfully guides, and if we would dare to take him at his word, um, he truly does, just as Christ promised, he has abundance for us, he has peace and hope and love, and it's truly regardless of circumstance. Um, when we entered into that valley, the Lord, I I did not want to stay, to be quite honest. When the Lord opened um, my eyes to what was kind of going on um, with my husband, the last thing I wanted to do was stay. Um, But God had proven that he was faithful to guide, and so I just started seeking him. Um, I started praying and, well, praying more praying that passionate prayer, the prayer that you're just desperate for him. And he um, whispered a word from the book of Joel. And, you know, he did. I I felt in my spirit, I didn't hear him audibly, that would have been wild, but I felt in my spirit, you know, him affirming, you know, you're my daughter. If you choose to walk, I will always be faithful to you, and I will always um, remain your father. But if you would dare to stay, I want to do something wildly miraculous, and he spoke a word from the book of Joel, and he said, um, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, and it was like I knew, I mean, I'm a mom of three kids, I was in the middle of my messy living room, and when he spoke that, when I read those words, it's like they came to life um, off the pages of, of the Bible, and I wrote every single one of those words down from the chapter, and I put it on my refrigerator, and I just said, you know, God, you're just going to have to do it. I don't feel it. I don't even see a glimmer of life in our home, but um, I just trust that you'll, you'll do a work. And he truly did. And like I said, the book is, the backdrop of the book is the story of our marriage. But more than that, it's just a testifying to what God did in me and transforming my thought life and um, challenging me to release control to him as my sovereign God. And um, Let's... Uh we're talking to Laura Williams. Uh, the book is called To Walk or Stay, mm-hmm. Trusting God Through Shattered Hopes and Suffocating Fears. Uh, the good, bad, and the ugly you talk about in the book. Uh, just people want to know a little bit. You don't have to get into all the details, mm-hmm. but what happened in the marriage? Well, um, early in our, our marriage started off rocky, and there was turmoil, it seemed like, from the early days in our home. But I started praying. I just knew something was going on. I I wasn't quite sure, but it was, I guess it was five years into our marriage, the Lord revealed that my husband um, was not being faithful. Okay. What did you do about that? Um, Besides wanting to kill him, which the Lord graciously did not allow me to do, um, I just pressed into God. That, That was really the only thing I knew to do, and he was so faithful. How did you confront your husband, though? Uh. Adam. It, it wasn't pretty, <laughs> if I'm really honest. It wasn't pretty. And it was a really rocky road. I mean, I, I was bold with him. Um, I was angry. <laughs> How did he I react? Was, he was definitely humbled. Um, it, it was, it was a, a time of deep brokenness for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ray? So, Laura, this was a journey for you. 
but it was also a journey for your husband. Oh yeah. W- was it a? <laughs> was the path a lot different that he had to walk versus the path that you had to walk? And and in the end, what kept you together? Because, I mean, you had to decide to stay, but he could have left also. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, our journeys were different, um, and. Yet, God met us both just where we were. Um, I know there are a lot of, I I hear story after story, and I know I'm, you know, possibly a a rare case, especially since he did choose to stay. Um, But it was a hard road for him because he had patterns of behavior that the Lord truly had to break. And, um, and like, it was a long road for both of us. Um, not an easy road, but one I can honestly say I wouldn't trade because of what God did in us individually and then in us as a couple. How long ago was that? That was almost five, a little over five years ago when everything was revealed. To walk or stay, that's the title of your book is, you mean to walk away from the marriage or stay in it? Basically, yes, yes. Um, however, the title, I think the implications that I wanted to portray is that we all have situations in our lives, relationships or circumstances that we want to walk away from sometimes, but that God may be challenging us to stay in and to just seek him through. Mm -hmm. Laura, you've got a chapter near the end called Choosing to Remember No More. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine that there are some women... Uh, who are, who, who, you know, I'm sure we've got some listeners who are very close, maybe in the exact situation you found yourself in five years ago. Right. Um, and they say, I don't know. I can never get over this. This, yeah. the thoughts, the images, the ideas always before me. Oh, yeah. Tell us, how do you get free of those memories of what your husband did? How do you choose mm-hmm. to remember no more? Well, first of all, for those who are listening that are in that situation, I never want to portray that it was an easy thing to do. It was, and, and continued to be for a number of years, a very difficult and thought-by-thought thought thing to do. Um, but one of the things that God truly transformed in me was my thought life. Um, he started to reveal what it was I was thinking about and then how to replace those thoughts with with what's true, taking my thoughts captive to truth. And so when I was reminded of um, the betrayal or um, lies or whatever it might be, God just, it it was only by his grace, and I know it sounds like a churchy answer, but by the power of his spirit revealing this is what you're thinking and now this is what is true. And, you know, we can't do that replacing unless we know truth, unless we're in the word. And I can say, God, I know that you're working this together for good. You know, and, and re- rehearsing what's true in my heart and mind, that is the absolute only way um, to move past those memories. Did you, did, did you have to go through a time where you dealt with questions like, am I somehow responsible for this, or did oh, I yeah. fail my husband? And, and, and how do you as a wife, I mean, how do you work through that? Right. I, well, at first I did not. I pointed all my fingers, all ten of them, at him and basically said, God, it's his fault. You need to fix him. But I had a really dear friend who um, <laughs> she said to me one day, she said, you know, Laura, maybe God does want to teach you some things through this. And, you know, at first I was a little resentful of that. But then as I sought the Lord, um, he did reveal things in me, and I do not take full responsibility. We both are were partners in our marriage, and we both um, had things that we did that led to our the division in our intimacy, the division in our communication. But um, God did show me things that He wanted to refine in me. And you know, any time He shows us things like that, it's only for our good. He doesn't do it to pound us with a hammer, or show us how bad we are. He does it. To bring us freedom and to give us a greater life and, and greater blessings. How many children do you have? We have three. Um, are they too young to know? Um, they're eight, six, and five. So basically my youngest was three months old when everything um, came out. And it was a very difficult time, not only physically, but just emotionally and, and everything. And my oldest, um, you know, we've been honest. 
she does not know details, obviously, but um, she can read and she knows my, my book is out and, you know, her teacher wants a copy of it. And so, you know, we've told her that mommy and daddy have had a difficult time in our marriage, but God has been faithful and he has kept us together. And, and we believe that, you know, marriage is for life. And, and you know, we, we're teaching them those things from a young age. And we think it's good that they see, you know, that marriage can be hard, but that God's design is intentional and it's meant to glorify him. We're talking to Laura, L-A-R-A, Williams. Uh, to Walk or Stay is the title of her book, Trusting God Through Shattered Hopes and Suffocating Fears. Where do you, do you have a website or? I do. Um, it's Laura Williams, L-A-R-A, like you just spelled, dot org. Um, and I also have a blog. It's called Too Overflowing, just T-O, overflowing.com. You're a... Uh, Subtitle is interesting, the word you use, trusting God through shattered hopes and suffocating fears. What do you mean by suffocating? You know, I think all of us know about fear, um, and fears can truly just, I mean, suffocate us. If we entertain them, you know, fears are going to come. Life is challenging, and this side of Jesus coming back, it's, it's going to have trials, and we're going to have things that we don't know the outcome of, but God wants us to not live in fear. You know, Christ came to free us from fear. And so it's, it's in the midst of those fears, I think, um, that can suffocate life, suffocate hope, suffocate peace, um, that he wants to, to minister um, freedom. How did Adam, your husband, I mean, I'm just trying to put mm-hmm. myself in his shoes. Obviously, he's the number one guilty party here <laughs> in wow. this story because he's the one that, you know, was involved in the infidelity that that changed your, your life and your marriage and led mm-hmm. us to interviewing you today. Mm-hmm. How does he feel about you writing a book about this? You when, know, he, when, he, when, he's, when he's trying to restore your confidence and trust and move on with life, and here we got to relive this whole thing again right. through your book. Well, you know, I, I say this in the introduction because I could never have done this project or, um, I mean, the Lord's opening doors of speaking, it, it could never have happened in an honorable way. I would never have done it had he not, <clears throat> excuse me, been supportive. And if anything blows my mind, it, it's his support. He and I both believe that our story is meant to be told. And um, I, I, I know I could never have done this had he wouldn't um, have been as supportive as, as he is. Um, and we just both believe that, that marriage is under attack and that if we can testify to God's faithfulness, um, we're but going to But are, are there one or two things you would recommend to couples maybe who have experienced the same thing uh, in terms of, I mean, as Ray said earlier, you know, for some couples, just it, 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 it ends the marriage because, oh, yeah. I mean, but for, but for some like you and Adam, you know, you get, you know, you work through it and get past it, and, and, and God is there with you, and you try to, and so you move on with life. How, what, what do you do? What, is there one or two things? Is it go to counseling? Is mm, it, yeah. uh, you know, I don't know. What do you do? Well, I, you know, I don't talk a whole lot about this in the book, but I think one absolute key component to moving past um, this type of breach in marriage is staying in community. Um, staying in community with other believers, surrounding yourselves with, um, you know, for me it was Sisters in Christ. I had about three, three women in my life that I just went to in tears and was able to be really raw and really real with. Um, and, you know, Adam, it took us a while. We had a period of time where we were not, we separated ourselves physically. Um, and, you know, in those times when it's really difficult, it is vital that we surround ourselves with other believers that are going to speak words of truth, that are going to pray for us and, and intercede. So that is one just key component, is surrounding ourselves with a handful of, of people that are going to hold us accountable to what God says and then to, to carry us um, as the body is intended to do. Um, but, you know, Lord, the second thing, yes. Laura, how, 